Hello, I'm Dr. Sugar, your internet doctor, here to continue our discussion on understanding bronchiolitis. I will go into a lot more detail now about the treatment of bronchiolitis. So if you're ready, let's get started with a dose of medical inspiration. So if the diagnosis of bronchiolitis is made, what will be done? Now, sometimes no treatment is necessary. If the infant is stable, he or she will be treated with supportive care, just as though they have a cold. Maybe a little Tylenol, some extra fluids, and just some TLC for mommy is going to work wonders. But sometimes further supportive therapy may help as well. So these are things like chest clapping, clear fluids, humidified air, or oxygen, just coupled with getting extra rest for the next few days. Now, you now know that bronchiolitis is caused by a number of different viruses, yes? And you also know that antibiotics are for bacterial infections. So antibiotics are not effective at all against viral infections. Antibiotics will never be given for bronchiolitis or RSV unless there is a concern that in addition to the virus causing bronchiolitis, that perhaps your baby also has a bacterial infection on top of that virus, perhaps an ear infection or strep throat or even pneumonia. In those cases, the doctor will also add an antibiotic, but otherwise an antibiotic has no effect on the viruses that cause bronchiolitis. The medicines that may be recommended by your doctor can include albuterol, which is a medicine that's usually used in asthma, and this can be given through either an MDI, an inhaler, or else a nebulizer treatment. And the other medicine that is often used is a steroid type medicine. Now most of the time, like I said, your baby can be cared for at home with close follow-up by your doctor. In extremely ill children, however, they will be hospitalized. And in addition to the albuterol and the steroid shots that we just talked about, they may be given antiviral medications such as ribavirin. Now, antiviral treatments may decrease the severity and the duration of the illness. To be effective, these medications must be given very early in the course of the illness. Now, very rarely, in serious, life-threatening cases, a breathing machine or ventilator may be needed. Usually, the symptoms get better within one week, and breathing difficulty usually improves by the third day. The mortality rate, as I said, is less than 1%. The possible complications of bronchiolitis can be airway disease, ear infections, developing asthma later in life, respiratory failure, secondary infections, like I mentioned, ear infections, throat infections, etc., as well as pneumonia. Most cases of bronchiolitis are not easily preventable because the viruses that cause the disorder are very common in the environment, especially in particular seasons, seasons, winter and spring. At this date, there's no RSV vaccine available. However, you should be aware that there is an effective product called polyvzumab or Synergis for infants who are at high risk of developing severe disease from RSV. Ask your child's doctor whether this medication is right for your child. It's commonly used in children who have higher risk factors, particularly in premature infants. I'm Dr. Sugar. Careful attention to hand washing, especially around infants, can help prevent the spread of viruses. Cover your mouth or try to stay home and not be around others if you're ill. All family members with an upper respiratory infection should be especially careful around infants. Wash your hands often, especially before handling the child. Make sure no one ever smokes in the same house or anywhere near your infant. Thank you for checking in. And if you haven't already done so, be sure to watch all of the medical inspiration videos on understanding bronchiolitis. Thank you for your interest in total wellness. And when you have a medical question, be sure 
to check the video content library for many, many more medical topics. I'll join you soon for your next dose of medical inspiration. Dr. Sugar, Dr. Sugar, can